this presentation decision criteria for selecting um oops that's um i thought okay my title was decision criteria for selecting the most suitable solar modules for utility scale projects from an lcoe perspective we are very much looking forward to your presentation Bahua. the floor is yours Okay, thanks, Mike. So thank you for providing this good opportunity to share my presentation to everyone. So let me share my screen. Okay. So, so can you see it? Yes, all good. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, let's start. So my topic is uh, decision criteria for selecting the most suitable solar modules for utility project from an LCOE perspective. So my report concluding uh, uh, five parts. The first one, I'll give a, a ex uh, explanation about the path to the lowest LCOE and the following with the, the lifetime system cost and the lifetime and the yield. And after that, I'll give you a case study to show how to choose the most suitable module for, from an LCOE perspective. Then I'll give my conclusion. So let's move on to the first slide. So I think everyone's familiar with the LCOE. There's two parts, one is the cost and another is energy. So that's a very long period, at least 25 years, and some are 30 years for double glass. And there are two factors, one is the cost. You see the cost has two parts. The first one is the initial investment, and another part, another part is annual o and cost. And for another, uh, the second factor is energy. So for the energy, we, we pay attention to the first year and the year, and then we will consider the following year, the, there's a degradation for the system. Okay. Uh, here I listed some paths to, to the lowest LCE, LCOE. Uh, this case is based in China, a uh, very uh, a big utility system that's uh, located uh, in west of China in Gomu. And uh, we did an uh, analysis from 2020 to 2025. 20, 20, uh, we see that LCOE from the 4.2 cents per kilowatt hours reduced to 3.1 and that's about 26 percent decrease and if we see the module related parts that contributes about 90 uh, percent and we focus on this part of we can see that if we assume the module price from 26 cents per watt uh, reduced to the 18 cents per watt it can contribute about 0, 0 0.3 cents. And the following with the, if we assume the module efficiency from 20.5% to 23%, and it, it can contribute uh, about 0 0.1 cent. And for the derivation and the system, system lifetime, if we use in the 0 0.45 and with the 30 years instead of 0.55% uh, with 25 years that can contribute 0.2 cents and another is for the big size module if we 
increase the module power from 450 watts to 600 watts, it can contribute about 0.1 cents. And the last one is the, the system design point. If we use the, the fixed rack with the monofacial trans, translate to the horizontal single X tracker with bifacial, the, the LCOE will be reduced about 0.2 cents. So that's the, the main part we will talk about today about model related. Okay, let's move on to the next part about the, the LCOE is the one very important part is the, the system cost. Uh, firstly, I'll introduce the, the in, initial investment cost. Here I did to anal a sensitive analysis why uh, for the efficiency to the BOS saving and another one is the model dimension to BOS saving. Uh, this case is uh, based on two countries, uh, one is the US that represents the system with very high, uh, high cost and another is China as a relative lower system cost. As I say, the left graph that shows if we increase the model power from 445 watts to 400, 455, that we are saving US cost about 0.5 cents per watt in US, and in China it's about half of that. As for the, the model dimension, uh, we take the 182 module with uh, 540 watts uh, versus the 166 with uh, 450 watts. And we can see that if we use the, the big size module, the BOS saving in US that is about 1.5 percent, uh, 1.5 cents per watt. In China, it's about one cents per watt. Uh, that's because in China, there's uh, a little lower laboring uh, labor cost and some insurance. In, in, uh, so this is very important to when you select a module, you need to consider the BOS saving. So we need to balance the BOS cost and module cost to achieve the, the lowest total system cost. And another cost is about the annual O&M cost. Here we did an analysis about the, the module cleaning cost. We know that this is a factor to influence the O&M cost in the uh, long period. Uh, we can say that the system is uh, 30 years lifetime and uh, we calculate the net present value of the cleaning cost and based in two countries you can see that if we in US the cost reduction is about 0.15 cent per watt but in China it's, it's, that is 0.03 that's because we the cleaning is many uh, the cost many because of the menu so the labor cost is a main factor in this uh, cost saving. So we see that we can see that with high module efficiency, there's lower module clean cost. So how to achieve the high module efficiency, high module power, and uh, with a uh, uh, lower cost? So that's our top five. So this product, we released it in last year. So the highest model power can reach up to 550 watts and the efficiency is about 21.5%. So behind this, we, we use some key technologies. As the first is the M10 wafer and we have the very high, mode, uh, very high cell efficiency and the connect, uh, combined with the multi-bus bar half cut design and the last, week, last one is the high density interconnection. So I'll give you an explanation about one each of the, each of the. For the more, uh, big size wave, I think uh, everyone's familiar with the, the sales uh, area increased by uh, a very large for M10 compared to M2. The area increased about 35%. And uh, meanwhile, the, if we use the same electrical layout for the module, the power can be increased uh, from one, four, 450 watts to 540. So that's increased a lot. Meanwhile, it can reduce the cost 
the the cell process cost and the non silicon material cost. A, a second key point is uh, the high cell efficiency. Here we use the gallium dropping plus cells. Last year, our product, uh, mass production cell efficiency can reach up to 23.4%, and the average cell efficiency can reach to 23.2%. As for the cell by fissionality, it can reach up to the 7, 78%. The third one is the, the mouth pass bar and the half cut. So as you know, uh, we use the, the round ribbon instead of a traditional ribbon that can in, uh, increase the, the absorb, absorb, absorption. And uh, combined with the, the multi pass bar the, and half cut, we can reduce the ohmic loss. And uh, another, another advantage is with multi pass bar, it can improve the resistance to the micro crack. So let me address one more point here. So for the multi bus bar design here, we use the 11 bus bar. That's the highest quantity in, uh, in industry for the size of wafer. So more bus bars, more reliability. And the fourth one is the high density interconnection technology. Compared to the traditional uh, gap between cells is using uh, two millimeters. The, the new technology uses the uh, small gap, gap that's less than 0 0.9 millimeter. Okay, so for this this kind of design, due to the it can uh, in, improve the module efficiency and uh, keeps the module power and uh, keeps the yield of the module. So compared to the overlapping gap with negative distance. The yield is higher than that one, and uh, in my opinion, theoretically, I think the uh, the reliability is, is better than the the negative distance um, module model design. So, uh, as for the end yield part, we can see that uh, due to the astronomy design with the gallium dropping wafer, and another another is with the the non-destructive cutting combined with the, the key point that I mentioned, so it can reduce a more energy yield in lifetime. Firstly, let's see the LEPRD and RRD. That's a main concern for uh, customers. So we use the very high quality wafer and combined with advanced passivation process. So uh, we did uh, some tests in different uh, third parties and in different conditions. That's true that for the, the less than, the, for the 168 hours of LEPRD degradation is less than 0.5%. And even for the test period is more than 300, 300 hours, our degradation is less than 2%. That's a very good result for the module. So there's no concern for our four fives LETRD and RD degradation. Okay, for the non-destructive cutting, we can see that compared to the traditional cutting, there's a uh, macro cracks in the edge of the cell. The non-destructive non cutting with a very smooth edge. So it can increase the bending strength of cell. So finally, the, the mechanical performance will be improved a lot. That means after the dynamic load or some other load, the degradation of the, this non-destructive cutting has very lower degradation than the traditional cutting. Okay. Uh, Besides our design, we, last year we got the PVER uh, NVGL's top performer. We, our product, the only product, when five all around the world, you see that we got the highest, highest score in this competition. And this is our first time to got, to get, got this, this award. So, a totally won the most quantity of the top performer award. Besides our indoor test, uh, we also did some after test. You can see that in, in our uh, China, middle of China, 
and the southeast of China. For the in, uh, middle of China, we did a test uh, in TUV node, and this location with a dry and with a hot and low temperature. And for the southeast of Hainan province, this location with a very wet and hot temperature. So we get a very good result after one year's operation. The annual degradation is less than 2%. It's mainly, okay, sorry. It's only 1.3%. Okay, so based on our design and our test, uh, we have confidence to provide our uh, top level power out warranty. First year, less than 2%, and the following year for biofuel is 0.45%, and for monofacial is 0.55%. And we give a 12 years product warranty. So I think quality is out of design. So based on our design and our test, I think the lifetime, lifetime and yield can be increased a lot. High efficiency can reduce, can result in a lower in MOT and lower small loss. And the low LRD and LETRD effect will increase more the end yield. The most important is the, the model reliability. So this is a very long period. So the reliability is most key point for the LCO is reduction. Okay, the the third, uh, the fourth part I'll give a case study to show how to choose the the most suitable modules for your utility project, uh, combined with the cost and the energy yield. So we we choose a location uh, as example to compare the, the M6 versus the M10 modules, M10 as uh, monofacial and bifacial. You can see that the module efficiency a little increased due to the, the, the a little gap. Uh, for the module price, we assume it's the same. And for due to the module weight is different, it assumes the module installation is different. And this location is based in US with 1P single extractor. And the scenario is the site area is the same. Uh, albedo is uh, 0.2%, 0 0.2. That's very typical albedo. And the lifetime is uh, for monofacial is 25 years, for bifacial is 30 years. And the same disease ratio due to the same disease ratio and uh, with the high module efficiency, there's a lower GCR. There's a lower GCR. Okay, firstly, let's see the system, uh, the cost part for the live system cost. We can see that there's a BOS cost and the, the, the green one is the, the net, pre net present value of OPEX cost. For the monofacial, of the M10 versus M6, the BOS cost saving is, uh, the total life system cost is saving about 1.6 US cents per watt. As for the M10 by visual versus the mo uh, monofacial, due to the five years lifetime, the total system cost is increased about six US cents per watt. We can see that the, the key difference for the BOS uh, difference is for the monofacial part as M10 versus M6 due to the module power increase, the module efficiency increase, uh, it can save in the module installation part, the mounting material saving and the mounting installation, and another one is the DC electrical bill as saving. As for the M10 bifacial versus the monofacial due to the a little lower power or efficiency, there is a little increase for the BOS, the BOS cost. So this is the, the cost part. So another part is for the end of the year. So we, we also separate for the monofacial part, the M10 versus M6, due to the high module efficiency, the less lower more, uh, MOT for the M10, 
So the small loss is, is, lesser, is lesser than the M6. And combined with the, the lower GCR, so the piece is more big, more large than the M6. It can receive more irradiance, so it can increase about 0.2%. But due to the a little bit higher current, the ohmic loss is higher than M6. So combined with the a, a little bit of good, a little bit of high low performance, low light performance of M10. So the total end yield is 0.3 percent than the M6. As for the bifacial versus the monofacial, we can see that we assume the bifacial gain is 5 percent, and the, the lower degradation can contribute about 2 percent. And the, sorry. And the, the five more years lifetime can contribute about 20%. So we combine the cost and the energy yield. We can see that if we target the same LCOE with M6, the M10 module can, can be sold with two cents higher, two cents per one higher than M6. As for the bifacial, it can be so it is 15.7 US cents per watt than the M6. So the premium is much higher than the M10. So that's why the, the bifacial increased a lot. Okay, uh, I'll give my conclusions. But so we need to pay attention to the model design and reliability. So balance the model price and the BOS cost choose the module based on LCOE optimization. So at current, I think a 12.5 is the best product for utility project. So lastly, I want to take this chance to introduce about a Trinity or Centrola. So we found it in 2006 and uh, we have capacity module, is, uh, module capacity is 12 gigawatts this year. And in last year, the statement volume is 6.6 .6 gigawatts. Uh, actually, we have four factories in, and three in China and one in Thailand. And this is our product family. So last year, we uh, released the uh, 5 and uh, in, we'll release a 6 with more than 600 watts in next few months. As for our capacity planning, that uh, will three gigawatt capa capacity will be released by Q1, and uh, the total gig, uh, total capacity of this year is 12 gigawatt. And in the following four years, our total cap model capacity will raise up to 21 21 gigawatt. Uh, okay, that's all. I think. Michael. Thanks, Babu. Uh, great presentation. Uh, um, okay, let's check if there are some questions. Um, uh, regarding large um, module size, someone is asking how, how, how to address the weight of a module as, as handling will become also more challenging. Um, so uh, what, what feedback do you get from installers um, on larger modules and um, Okay, so for the last modules, I think uh, 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 a 6 so we all use uh, 210 with a wafer, and uh, that is uh, the 120 cells design, and it's more than 600, uh, 600 watts. From our uh, customers, we, we, heard, we heard some uh, requirement from the market so we are uh, in the development internal. Uh, we will release this product the, in the next few months and uh, the mass production will be in the second half of this year. Okay, okay, so, oh, interesting. Um, and and what, what, what capacities are, are you thinking about for this 600 watt module? So when you look at um, your total capacity next year, so how much of that will be then the, the, the big size, the 210 size? 
Okay, so as you know, so our new release capacity is compatible with uh, 180, 82, and uh, 210. So we can uh, adjust the capacity flexibility for M10 or G12. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so can you maybe um, just, um, because I think you're one of the few companies that will be then <laughs> offering both uh, cell sizes. And uh, as we've been hearing at this conference and the previous conferences, there's more, more rather the one camp and the other. So um, what, what was the reason? So, so you um, go um, beyond 182 to 210 and when you have both products in your portfolio, so um, which product um, or, or how will you, you use it to address markets? So will be the one actually for this application and the other for this application or how will you, um, uh, how, what's your strategy? Yep. Okay, I understand. So, uh, that's a good question. So, uh, from my point, that I think that uh, the lowest L three is the best product for the, pro the market. So now, for I think why at four five is the most suitable product for now because there's uh, 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 the T twelve module has no mass production and the compatibility is not uh, perfectly solved. So. Uh, for now, S45 is the best. As for the S46, I think in the future, as for it will be increase the, the market share due to the, the low voltage and uh, it can reduce the, the bill saving. And I think the customer or EPC, they can cal cal calculate very clearly more than module manufacturers. So that's why we can provide these two modules and uh, Custom can choose which one is suitable for the project. I think that's actually a, a, a yeah. <laughs> very nice Salomonics. So <laughs> I like that. Um, um, and customers probably do as well. Uh, if, yeah. um, um, let's maybe check if there's anything. Um, Oh, yeah, there's one question. I think that's more a general question, but um, I think for an LCOE calculation, is it's important when we talk about inverter lifetime. So how do you calculate that um, when you compare it to a module? Um, the module, I don't know, has either a warranty of 25 years or 30 years, or uh, I think probably the technical lifetime is even beyond that. But um, so, so what, what do you um, um, calculate for inverter lifetime in your, in your calculations? Yeah. So in, in my calculation, I think uh, I used uh, 10 years to replace the inverter. Okay, okay, yeah. I think. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, I think that was a great presentation. Thanks so much, uh, uh, 